Welcome back to day 21 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, from Monday to Saturday each week, I'm posting a new video with a six mark question so that you can practice answering these extended response type questions. You can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also a playlist containing all of the videos so far. Before you dive into today's question, which comes from the fourth topic of AQA GCSE Physics Paper 1, a couple of quick reminders for you. Firstly, this is not an essay question. You do need to lay your answer out in a logical fashion, but there aren't any marks at all for writing in full sentences or for your spelling and grammar. Not only are you allowed to use bullet points or a numbered list or a table to write your answer, I would really strongly encourage you to do so. This is going to make sure that you are being really systematic in actually answering the full question. And more importantly, it's going to make it very clear to your examiner that you have covered all of the bases. Often when students write a full page of prose, they can end up getting a bit confused and forgetting to include some vital information. Now, if you haven't done so already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. I've mentioned in a couple of the other videos that I would encourage you to find the six mark extended response question early in the exam and then answer the rest of the paper, but have it ticking away in the back of your head and scribble down a few notes as you're going through when you think of things that you need to include. So for this question, it asks you about the properties, but it doesn't specify which properties. So that's something you definitely need to have clear in your brain before you start writing. The key ones are going to be the differences in ionizing power and penetrating power. But you might also want to include the range in air and also their response to an electromagnetic field. Now, the question says that you need to include an explanation of these. So you're also going to need to describe the structure of each type of radiation. This question is another perfect example of where it's a good idea to lay your answer out as a table. This is going to make sure that you're talking about all three types of radiation and that you're remembering to make equivalent statements about all of them for their structure and their properties. So in terms of their structure, first of all, an alpha particle is a helium nucleus. In other words, it's two protons and two neutrons. And so that means that it's the heaviest of the particles and also it has a positive charge. Your beta particle is then a fast moving electron that's been released from the nucleus of a radioactive atom. And so it's a bit lighter, about 8000 times lighter because an electron is about 2000 times lighter than a proton or a neutron. And it has a negative charge. And those ideas about mass and charge are going to be important when we come to explain the properties. And then, of course, your gamma radiation isn't a particle at all. It's an electromagnetic wave. And you might even want to specify it's not a particle, so it doesn't have a mass and it's not positively or negatively charged. Then in terms of their ionizing power, we have this sort of sliding scale from an alpha particle, which is very highly ionizing, down to gamma radiation, which is far less ionizing. But when it comes to penetration, the order is reversed. So our alpha particle can only penetrate a very short distance, whereas gamma radiation is much more penetrating. And you might want to include the type of materials that they can penetrate. So alpha particles are stopped by paper or also by your skin. Beta particles can be stopped by thin aluminium foil. And gamma radiation requires a thick layer of lead in order to stop it from penetrating. In terms of their range in air, alpha particles can only move a few centimetres because as they collide with the molecules in the air, they just stop. Whereas beta particles can maybe make it up to about a metre and gamma radiation basically has an infinite range in air. So remember that gamma radiation is reaching us from the sun. Obviously, there's a vacuum there rather than being air, but it's managing to make it through the whole of the Earth's atmosphere. And then if you talked about the response to an electromagnetic field, then alpha particles are going to be strongly deflected in one direction. And then beta particles are slightly less deflected in the opposite direction. And then gamma radiation doesn't respond to that field at all. As you're hopefully aware by now, the extended response six mark question that is common to the foundation and higher tier is going to be level marked. And what that means is that you don't get six marks for saying six true things that are in answer to the question. You have to hit certain criteria, like linking parts of your answer together or making sure that you've covered different aspects of the question. So with this question, to get a level three mark, to get five or six out of six, you're going to need to have actually answered the full question, which here includes an explanation of the differences in the properties. So in other words, you need to explain why they're different by linking it back to their structure. 
So if we think first of all about the ionizing power of these different types of radiation, the alpha particle is the most highly ionizing. And the reasons for that are twofold. Firstly, because it consists of two protons along with the two neutrons, it has twice as much charge as the beta particle. But also it's much, much heavier. And so that means that if it interacts with another atom, it's far more likely that electrons are going to be removed and that atom is going to be ionized. So then if we contrast that with the beta particle, it's obviously got a lower mass and a lower charge. And the gamma radiation doesn't have a mass at all or charge. Then if we think about penetration and also the range in air, because these are kind of interlinked, either one of these can be explained by the fact that this alpha particle is so much larger that it's much easier for it to be stopped because it's much more likely to interact with other atoms and therefore be prevented from carrying on any further. Thankfully, you don't need to have everything that is on this slide in order to get six marks. Firstly, this bit about the response to the electromagnetic field. A lot of us still teach this because it is quite important and there have been questions since the new syllabus came in that have given you a diagram and then asked you to work out which particle is which or explain the difference between alpha particles and beta particles movement but this isn't listed explicitly in the specification anymore so in a question where they haven't given you a diagram or anything to help you work it out they can't actually expect you to have included it so we can take that out now, in terms of what you need to do in order to achieve level two or level three, for level two, we're going to expect you to have both a description of the radiation and also something about their properties. So if you'd said alpha particles are two protons, two neutrons, beta particles are an electron, gamma is an electromagnetic wave, and then you've just talked about ionization, that's going to be enough to get you into that level two. In order to get into level three and get five or six marks, you're going to need that description and you're going to have needed to have talked about both ionization and penetration power. And you're going to need to have done that explanation and made that link that it's the fact that an alpha particle is larger and charged that means both that it um, is more highly ionizing and that it is less able to penetrate. For tomorrow's question, we're back to biology paper two with a question from the homeostasis topic. Remember, you can find a link in the description below to all of the questions that we've used this week and also a playlist with all of the previous videos in case you've missed any. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow for day 22 of the six mark challenge. If you found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE science revision videos coming soon.